Alabama fans, we are just 38 days away until Kalen DeBoer and this Alabama Crimson Tide team take the field at Bryant-Denny Stadium for their first game of the 2024 season. Players will report starting on July 30th, and then practice for fall camp will kick off on July 31st. Until on today's show, we're going to be breaking down, talking about some of the things to watch, you know, going into fall camp and going into this 2024 season. Before we get into all of that, though, I want you guys, if you're as excited as me for this 2024 Alabama football team, we are just 38 days away. Spam me in the comment section right now. I want to get a monthly high for comments on this video today. That monthly high is 153 total comments on, a, on that uh, Brandon Walker video we did a couple weeks ago. So I wanted to see a ton of me's in the comments section. Anybody that puts more than 20 me's in the comments section, you will get a shout out on a future video. The first thing I want to talk about going into this 2024 season is Jalen Milrow. He's coming in. It's his second year as a starter here for Alabama, and I really hope he can take that next step into being a you know, positive starter for Alabama here in 2024. He was really good, I thought, for you last year. You know, obviously, there are things that he can improve on. He needs to get rid of the ball. He needs to be decisive. Either find your first or second read, and if they're not there, take off, man. Use your legs because that is one of the best abilities that Jalen Milrow has is his legs. The other best ability that I think is has is his deep ball passing. Jalen Milrow was very, very good last year on balls 20-plus yards downfield. You see right here, over 1,200 yards, 16 touchdowns to only one interception. What Jalen Milrow this year really needs to improve upon is anywhere from that 10 to 20-yard range when it comes to passing, um, you know, Four touchdowns, four interceptions. That is not good when it comes to 10 to 20 yards. You know that 52% completion percentage, I'd like to see that bump up anywhere, you know, mid to high 60s at least. You know, anywhere from the line of scrimmage to 10 yards, he's solid. And as he should be, I think if Jalen Milrow can improve on those passes 10 to 20 yards, I think he's going to be, you know, really solid for Alabama this year. And it's going to take, take them to the next step on offense. So let me know in the comment section right now, guys. I know there's still a lot of, you know, the jury is out for a lot of you guys on Jalen Milrow. So I want to know, what is your confidence level in Jalen Milrow? Scale it for me, 1 to 10. It is the pinned comment on today's video. Do you know what that means? If that ad plays right now on YouTube, that's totally fine. You can ignore it. Go down there to the pinned comment and let me know your confidence level in Jalen Milrow. Second thing I want to talk about going into fall camp is this Pretty big cornerback battle that's going to be happening. You know, you lose Kool-Aid McKinstry, you lose Tyra and Arnold, two of the best, you know, DB tandems that Alabama's had in a while. And, you know, I would assume Damani Jackson's going to be the guy on one side of the ball. You really hope he can improve and, you know, from his time at USC last year. The other side of the ball, I think it's going to be Deshaun Jones. But that's not necessarily, you know, a given. I just assume that it's going to be Deshaun Jones. We saw a lot of Zay Mincy, Zabin Brown during um, Alabama's uh, spring camp. Saw a little bit of Jahil Hurley. Really excited about Jalen Ibakwe as well. There's a lot of guys on this team that, you know, can possibly make a run at that quarterback, cornerback spot. You look at Damani Jackson, Deshaun Jones, both of these guys coming in as transfers, and they were okay at, you know, their previous stops. USC for Damani Jackson, Wake Forest for Deshaun Jones. But these, both of these guys are going to be have to be a lot better here in 2024 for Alabama if, you know, Alabama wants to be, you know, maintain that standard that they have had for a long time on the defensive side of the ball. Now, we mentioned some of these guys just a minute ago, some of the other corners that could possibly start for Alabama this year. Zabin Brown, man, we saw a lot of him. Jalen Ibakwe got a lot of buzz coming into Alabama, but didn't you know, we didn't see a ton of him you know, getting some of those starting reps in the spring. Zay Mincy, I am so excited about that kid. And then I would not rule out Jahil Hurley as a guy that can step up in another year in this program. I understand it's going to be a different system this year, but I think Jahil Hurley, he's got a, a, you know, a year under his belt more than the other guys. I think he is possibly a guy that could step up for the Crimson Tide. 
Make sure you guys are subscribed right here to the Alabama Football Report. I am so excited that the season is only 38 days away, and that means only 38 days away from our first watch party here. I guess technically we did a couple last year. We did the Tennessee game last year. We did the Rose Bowl last year. I did the A-Day game as well, but we're going to have a full slate of watch parties every single game, so do not miss out. We have so much fun here. If you haven't seen a chat sports uh, watch party, whether it's the NFL or anything else, we have a lot of fun here. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Uh, that's youtube.com slash at Roll Tide TV. The next thing we want to talk about going into fall camp are some of the injuries that Alabama was a little bit plagued with last year and last spring. Some of the spring injuries that Alabama was having to deal with last year Jalen Hale, obviously, one of the biggest losses that we had. You know, I thought he was probably going to be, you know, your deep ball threat, your wide receiver one for Alabama this year. Ends up, you know, he goes down with that knee injury and don't know how long that's going to take him out for, most likely most of the season. And then Jihad campbell Jaheim Otis, also guys that, you know, just had lingering injuries last year and into the spring. Both of those guys missed the A-Day game. And back to uh, Jalen Hale here for a second. Like I said, I think he was going to be a deep ball threat for you. You know, five receptions last year, 148 yards, about 30 yards averaging, you know, per catch and one touchdown. You're really going to miss him on, you know, that w in that wide receiver room. And then you look over uh, Jahad Campbell, Jaheim Otis. Both of these guys, you know, I thought Jahad Campbell had a really good season last year. I think Jaheim Otis really needs to step up this year. Had a pretty solid freshman year, and then his sophomore year was not as good. But both of these guys, you know, Jaheim Otis is going to be your run stopper in the middle, along with Tim Keenan. And then Jahad Campbell is your other middle linebacker. You really, really need these guys to stay healthy. And then Jaheim Otis, you can see, I talked about, you know, the regression kind of from year one to year two, had just about the same number of stats. But you see with his pro football focus grades right here, he just was not as good as he was, you know, in his freshman season. All the grades went down, his overall grade, his run, run defensive grade, his tackle grade, his pressure grade. Jaheim Otis really needs to hit his stride this year for the Crimson Tide because I really worry about the run defense last year, or this year, because last year, you know, it kind of teetered off towards the end, Alabama really needs with this 4-2-5 defense that they're going to be doing. They really need to, you know, be able to hit the gaps and maintain, you know, the run game uh, better than they did last year. Today's show is presented by Game Time. I love the summertime because Major League Baseball is back in full swing, and I love making the drive over to Atlanta for a Braves game every chance I get. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down closer you get to first pitch. And with those killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest prices guaranteed, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. With Alabama games just over a month away now, you can get tickets to watch the Crimson Tide. And Game Time doesn't just have sporting events. They have concerts. They have comedy. They have theater and more and Game Time has just so many things I really love about this ticketing app. They have last minute tickets. They have flash deals. You pick the section, Game Time picks the seats. Because what does it really matter? As long as you're, you know, in that section, they're going to pick the seat for you. It is very easy. They have views from your seat so you don't get blocked out by a pole or something stupid. They also have the lowest prices guaranteed. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create your account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Check out GameTime.co for last-minute tickets. Terms do apply, but again, create your account and redeem code CHATSPORTS, that's C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, for $20 off your per first purchase. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. The next thing I want to talk about today is this new defense that Alabama is going to be rolling out. You know, Nick Saban for the past 17 years really didn't matter who the defensive coordinator was. Obviously, Kirby Smart did a phenomenal job at Alabama. So did Jerry Pruitt, obviously. Um, but, you know, the last couple of seasons, the defense hasn't been as good. They were a little bit le better last year with Nick Saban taking more of a role on the defensive side of the ball. But this, uh, uh, this new system that Kane Womack is bringing in is going to be a lot different in how you're going to see guys 
played. So there's going to be a lot of changes. And I am very concerned might not be the right word, but I am interested in seeing how Alabama is going to be able to do on the defensive side of the ball. Obviously, they have some different positions. They've got that Husky position, which is basically just your nickel position that Nick Saban used. And you've also got that Wolf and Bandit position. That Wolf position, you know, it's an outside linebacker slash edge rusher, but they're also going to be asking that guy to play in coverage more than maybe, you know, Nick Saban would have asked that guy to do. And I'll be honest, I'm a little bit worried about that. But we'll see how it goes. I've got faith until it doesn't work, so we'll see. Now, Kane Womack, obviously coming over from South Alabama, he was their head coach, and we're kind of comparing a little bit. I understand it's a completely different, you know, um, level of competition. Alabama last year, these were the defensive rankings. Alabama ranked number 18. South Alabama in the country was ranked number 15. The rush yards, South Alabama did pretty solid last year, 113 yards. In the passing game, you know, they weren't, you know, that much worse than what Alabama was last year. And you had a pretty good secondary for Alabama last year. What I really want to see is third down uh, conversion percentage, though. If Alabama can stay around that 33% mark this year, I think that'll be pretty solid for the Crimson Tide. And then the points per game you know, pretty similar when it comes to both Alabama and South Alabama last year. So I want to hear from you guys one more time in the comments section. Do you think Alabama's defense will be better here in 2024 under Kane Womack than it was under Nick Saban and uh, Kevin Steele for Alabama last year? If you think it'll be better, type B. If you think it's going to be worse, type W right now in the comments section. The last thing I want to talk about going into fall camp, I think it's one of the bigger things on the offensive side of the ball anyways for the Crimson Tide, is going to be that right tackle position. You know, obviously Caden Proctor, he transferred to Iowa, came back, but he missed spring ball. Elijah Pritchett was that guy that was playing that left tackle spot during spring ball, and you got Wilkin Forby was there at that right tackle spot who played a lot, you know, during A-Day and in spring practice. You know, I think Caden Proctor going into the spring is, or excuse me, going into the fall, going into week one, is going to be your starting left tackle. You got one of the best, uh, you know, interior offensive lines in the country. The real question, in my opinion, is who is going to play and who is going to start at that right tackle position for the Crimson Tide? Is it going to be Elijah Pritchett or is it going to be Wilk and Formby? Uh, you know, it could be either one of those guys. Elijah Pritchett was the one you know, for Alabama last year that, um, you know, got beat out by Caden Proctor. But, you know, we'll see. It's a year later. You want to see the guy improve. You hope he can improve. I think we'll conform. He's going to give him a little bit of run at that right tackle spot, though. So last time in the comment section, guys, get in there. Let me know who do you think is going to be the starting right tackle for the Crimson Tide here in 2024. Type EP if you think it's going to be Elijah Pritchett or WF if you think it'll be Wilkin Formby.